Hello friends, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about pivoting data in Power Query. This is a scenario when you get data as a name value from a source system. This happens a lot when you have a CRM system as a source, when you have ERP system as a source. Uh, these systems gives you the ability to store the data as custom fields, you define custom fields and store the data, but behind the scene, in the database, they store it as a name value. And I'm going to explain to you how this data can be retrieved and fetched and stored in the data warehouse or inside Power BI using Power Query pivot function. Let's jump into this video. In normal situation, you get data as a um, as a table structure. Each column has its own definition, and the value of each column is stored in that column. Uh, however, many source systems these days, and uh, those that are highly customized, they give you this capability to go and define a custom field. For example, you are building a, uh, you are using a CRM system, you want to define a custom field, um, and this system gives you the ability to do that. But behind the scene, because of the flexibility they provide to you behind the scene, they have to store it in a way that the custom field definition uh, is possible in the front end for them. So the way that they store it is that they have a field uh, which is the key column, another field which is the name, another field which is the value of that field. And they store it like this. Uh, this data, however, when it comes to data warehouse, it should not be stored in this way. Let me uh, jump into my screen and I show you how this exactly look like. So as you can see here, I have a Power BI uh, report. I'm going to get data from Excel and I choose uh, this Excel file. Now I choose this as Excel file, but this happens a lot when you get data from a dataverse, from a database that is for dynamics, for CRM, for ERP systems such as Salesforce. Um, and I will show you what the data looks like. So this is normally the way that the data looks like. Let me enable the zooming in my laptop so that you can see it better. Here you go. Okay, so here as you can see, this data is stored in what I call as a name value structure. Name value structure means that we have a, uh, we have a key column always, and then we have a name column and value column. So here it says that for key column one, which might be like customer ID or contact ID, whatever, the column is first name, the value is Reza. Uh, column is last name, value is red. Column is age, value is 44. And then for the key column, for the ID of two, which is another customer, another contact, the column is name, first name is Mike. The column is last name, first name is whatever, uh, last name is whatever. Uh, and then the age is something else. So these three records are kind of representing one customer in this case. These three records are presenting another customer. The way that this data should be stored is that each of these should be one record in the database and then we should have columns, column names as ID, first name, last name, age, and then their value underneath. The way that we do this in Power Query is called pivoting. So what I'll do, I'll transform this data, I'll bring it into this Power Query Editor environment. Uh, the same functionality is available in Excel. It is also available in Dataflow within Microsoft Fabric. Uh, here is my uh, field values, as you can see it here. Uh, we always have to consider one of these fields as our key column, which here is actually ID, because as I mentioned to you, these three columns are uh, categorized as one, let's say, contact in here uh, with their ID, whereas these three columns is another contact with their ID. So ID is kind of like representing the key in here. So once I select this, I'll go to the transform tab. Here we can do pivot and unpivot. I already explained what unpivot is. Unpivot is exactly the reverse of this structure. We do it when we have like data in budget format and we want to transpose it 
uh, we do something called ampivert. I have a separate video about that if you want to go and check it out, which is quite common transformation. Pivot, however, is like we know what the ID column is. We'll go and select the we'll go and select the column that we want to pivot it. This is going to be co the column that at the moment is actually our column headers. As you can see, first name, last name, age. But these are going to p be pivoted across, uh, instead of rows, across columns. Uh, ID column will remain intact, but everything else, first name would come as a column, last name would come as a column, age would come as a column, and their value separately. So what we'll do, we'll select this, this column, the name column in this case, which is my pivot column. I'll click on that pivot column. Then what I'll do is I'll choose the value column. This would be the value that comes under that. Uh, now, one interesting thing about pivot is that pivot by default applies an aggregation. Why it applies an aggregation? Because you might have two, uh, va two records with the same uh, field name in here for the same ID. It is an error in the data. We should not have that, but in the way that data is stored, it might be possible. So because of that, there is an advanced option here. That advanced option gives you the ability to go and change uh, the aggregation. By default, it's a count aggregation. I'm going to change that and say, don't aggregate. You have to do it only if you know that there is no duplication in data uh, and if you know that your data is clean otherwise you'll get an error so uh, i'll choose this value column and i say don't aggregate i want the actual value over there so when i click on ok and that is the whole thing when i click on ok this will turn my data from uh, kind of like transpose it from being rows into the columns you see first name last name and age the ID is the separator of the columns. Uh, and I can see the contact ID 1 is this record. The contact ID 2 is this record. So that pivot operation actually changed the way that this worked. So my source was like this before that operation. Now it is changed to this. It is always recommended also to set a proper data type after this process. You can select all the columns, control A, and then go and over here set detect data types. Uh, it detects it based on the first thousand records, first 200 records, depending on how many number of columns that you have or if it is in um, data flow based on the first hundred records. Uh, so here is a very simple transformation for you that applies uh, and gives you this. Now, if in the pivot column section, instead of instead of doing that don't aggregate you get count you'll get values here one 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 um, because it gives you the count of values but it's a good way to find out do you have data duplication or not because if you have data duplication then in one of those places you'll have more than one as a value like two three something like that so pivot is a really simple transformation the way that it works one more time is that you'll go and choose the column that you want to be pivoted and then you choose the value column of it and you'll set it to don't aggregate you'll get the result and you set the detect data type we do this quite often when the data comes from a system that allows you to define custom fields because they store it as a name value when we bring it into the data warehouse when we bring it into analytical systems such as power bi we'll bring it properly formatted as a table. My name is Reza Rad. I hope you like this video and learn something new this, from this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos about Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.